uh, first of all, I welcome Honorable Special Coordinator, Mr. Robert Destro and his colleague from the State Department and also my colleague from the, who was on, who is on this panel, Tashi Delect to all. Uh, it's an honor for us to share a platform with you, sir. And uh, let me first, let me give you a brief introduction of Norbulinka Institute. Uh, Norbulinka was founded in the year 1980s by Mr. Kelsang and his wife, Kim Ishi, uh, when Tibetan people came into exile in 1960s. Uh, with his holiness, the biggest challenge for us when we came into different countries is to preserve our identity. And for that, it is only possible if we preserve our language, our art and culture. So at that time, Tibetan exile government, presently known as the Central Tibetan Administrations, and of course, with the help of the host country, India, have started the Tibetan schools where Tibetan children can learn the Tibetan language. So there was not such an institute where you could learn the Tibetan art. So we need a, uh, we need, or you can say, urge the need to start such institute where the Tibetan new generations, especially born in India, could learn the Tibetan art and culture. So the idea of starting this institute is to preserve Tibetan art and culture and pass on this art to younger generations and many more generations to come. Uh, the masters in these art sections uh, have learned this art from the Tibet and they pass on this art to younger generation in our institute. And over the year, we have trained so hundreds of students in these traditional sections. Uh, not only this, we uh, also give a helping hand in solving the unemployment and exile Tibetan community, like those who train in our art classes. When they graduated, we employ them in our workshops. And when they produce uh, the products in these workshops, it will go in our stores. And the, by selling these products, we raise the incomes and the, the incomes we will spend on our, our staff salaries, their medical insurance, their kids' educations, plus the, for the social welfare of our people. And uh, we uh, like uh, we also like uh, try to solve the unemployment uh, through uh, like uh, those who newly arrived from Tibet at that time, who didn't get a basic education back then in Tibet. When they came into exile, we employed them and gave on-job training, so uh, uh, they could like uh, mm, so they can provide a decent livelihood for their families to their families. Uh, and we also run three small guest houses locally uh, uh, in Dhamshala itself. And all the incomes from these guest houses and also from the sales of our products will directly go to pay the salaries of our com uh, employee accommodations and like these things. Presently, we have a population of almost 360 something people who is working in this institute. Uh, Nobulinka, we believe that Nobulinka is not only an institute but it has become a community where we try to look after all the basic needs of our people from providing employment to their social welfare and young generation basic educations, or you can say modern education. For example, we, uh, like we run one crash in kindergarten in our institute where the children of our artists can have all the basic educations Till they join the schools. The parents can leave their children as early as one month to six year old at our kindergarten while they go for work till they return to their home. And during this period, our staff and teachers can look after all the basic necessities and education of the kids. And we, rec we recognize that uh, the success of our mission is dependent on the well-being 
of the individual members who make up the Nobelinger community. Uh, the best works come from out of the sense of joy. And so we are dedicated, dedicated to ensuring the comfort of, of our employees body outside of works. Our goal is to foster an environment where Tibetan community and family value can flourish. Only by nurturing our community can we hope to thrive as an organization. So let me give you a brief like a, a introduction of uh, the, the departments which we have in our institutes. We categorize in two departments like traditional sections plus research, culture and uh, academic sections. In traditional art sections, we have like a, a metal sculpture departments where we are creating a Buddhist idols, gods and deities um, out of the materials of copper, silver, since it is related to the Buddhist religions and uh, the procedure of making all these statues have to exactly follow what written in the Buddhist text. And we train the student in these sections for uh, six years to learn the basic things about the metal sculpture. And the second one is uh, Tanga painting sections. Tanga painting is also a Buddhist, you can see the Buddhist paintings made on a canvas. And it is also since related to the Buddhist uh, religions, all the procedures of making like uh, you see, it's a not a like a freehand painting. It is uh, like uh, the, all the proportions and everything, the basic uh, rules and regulations of the colors and everything you have to follow exactly what written the Buddhist text and we try to like uh, uh, use the, all the natural stone colors plus we sometimes we also use gold and silver colors it depends on the person who are commissioning these works and the third one is Tanka applique in traditional sections it's the same like Tanka painting uh, but instead of making on a canvas it it uh, makes out of the silk cloth, raw silks, the sketching is gold on the tracing paper and according to the needs of the color and the proportions, they cut the silk cloth in hundreds and thousands of pieces and assemble in one piece and it will create the tanka. And this is also since it is related to Buddhism, Buddhist religions, so you have to follow exactly what written in the text. And these all the sections we train the student for three years. And apart from that, we have a woodwork sections where we are creating a Tibetan uh, altar, throne of high lamas, incense burner, uh, the photo frames, all the curved and traditional Tibetan styles. Plus, we have what also tailoring sections, like uh, categorized in two departments, like tailoring section also, one tailoring applique, and one tailoring design sections, tailoring applique, and where we create a uh, there's uh, cushion covers, wall hanging, Tibetan tents, all are uh, like uh, as make according to traditional Tibetan styles. And uh, the second one is telling design sections where we are trying to create a, um, uh, such a products with a mixture. We have one design studio, also design section where we have one designers who graduated, uh, graduated from the design uh, university from the United States. She's working here and creating a new designs out of the mixture of Tibetan styles and the modern styles. So every year we try to create a new line of products uh, to the people who are visiting our institute so that every year the people when they visit our institute, apart from the traditional products, we also they could also see a new line of products which they could purchase as a souvenirs. And, uh, weaving section also we have wood painting sections weaving section also uh, like uh, we are creating our own fabrics and mat materials like these days it is very difficult to get a uh, authentic kind of materials which we try to use in our products so we try to create our own products and uh, also train the, uh, our artists in these sections uh, the second um, the uh, department like i said is uh, research and cultural department plus academic sections. In these sections, we have a literary and cultural departments where our, uh, these uh, researchers are doing a research on the Tibetan language, culture, uh, art, and they publish books and, and monthly newsletter on Tibetan culture and 
uh, till date, one of the biggest achievement or these sections is uh, publishing a Tibetan encyclopedia books, which is one of these first kind of books in Tibetan uh, history uh, where you can have a, where you can uh, know everything about the Tibetan culture, language, and till date we have published 17 volumes and it is still an ongoing project. project. The second one is, uh, you can see, the official biography of His Holiness the Dalai Lama departments. Uh, this section uh, we consider as a very important section because the, this, this department is working, our researchers are working on the, doing the research and publishing a detailed biography of His Holiness the Great 14th Dalai Lama. Uh, our researchers are working close with His Holiness office to write a detailed work of His Holiness. Until date, we have published 24 volumes and completed his work up to 1995, and it is still an ongoing project. And we believe that the scope of this biography is also much greater because so much has happened during this uh, His Holiness life, lifetime of the 14th Dalai Lama that has drastically changed the way of life for Tibetans. And because his own story is so interwoven with these changes, uh, the scholars at Nobelinga intend this book to serve as not only a biography of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, but also a comprehensive account of modern history of Tibet. So this is um, our biography sections. And third one is academic or Tibetan culture. It's, uh, we call it a Nobelinga College, where we give an education of bachelor education to the students about Tibetan art and Tibetan language, Tibetan literature, Tibetan history, Buddhist philosophy, plus English language and Chinese language and Tibetan medicines. These are the optional subjects. So these are the um, uh, brief, I can say, the introduction of the Institute. Hope you are not confused with these things because some is uh, our institute. So we, apart from this uh, department, we have some small section also, which uh, I don't have to mention right now because we don't have a, that much time. So uh, the second thing is, I think is, I would like to uh, introduce the panel from our institute side. Uh, the first I would like to introduce, uh, uh, we have a first panel here is Mr. Tenzin Nobu. He is the master instructor of Thangka painting department. Uh, he was born in Tibet. He came into exile in 1980s. And when he came to India, he enrolled in Noble Inca, graduated from here under the uh, master instructor. And now he's the second generation of artists who is now leading our, leading our this Tanga painting department. And second one, Mr. Chetan Tendu. Uh, he is the master instructor of metal sculpture department. Uh, he was born in India, in southern part of India, by Lekubidir, it's a huge Tibetan settlement in South India. And he also got a uh, like a, um, graduated from the sculpture department under the master instructor, and he is also a second generation artist who is now leading our uh, sculpture department. And third, I, I would like to introduce Mr. Tenzin Gelsen. Uh, he is the master instructor of wood carving sections. Uh, he also was born in Tibet and came into exile in 1990s. And he enrolled in Noblinga and trained in Noblinga itself. And he is also a second generation who is now leading our wood carving department. And third, uh, Ms., uh, Mrs. Hamotso, uh, she is a master instructor of tailoring department, like I told you earlier. And she also born in Tibet and came into exile in 1990s and uh, enrolled in Noblinga and learned about the basic education on tailoring department. And now she is the second generation of uh, artists who is leading our tailoring department, board tailoring department. And then last, I would like to introduce Mr. Suldim Yamso. He is the master instructor of Thangka applique departments, uh, who are also born in Tibet and came into exile in 1990s and enrolled in Noble Inca Thangka department. Now he's leading our Thangka applique departments. So these are the panels today with me and uh, the next thing, according to the schedule, uh, I would like to present you a virtual tour of our institute. So I will request the Tibet TV staff to please play the virtual tour of our institute.
Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to invite honorable special coordinators to say a few words. Good evening, and uh, and thank you uh, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I, uh, in watching the video, uh, I was inspired by the depth and beauty of of the work that you're doing, uh, and of the the depth and beauty of Tibetan culture, and of the talents that that God has given all of you. Uh, that you uh, have been able to to preserve and and extend this and and to train young people. It's it is uh, it's very very inspiring and and I thank you for it. Uh, but thank you, uh, Mr. Funsuk, for having me join you this morning. Uh, at least the morning our time here in in Washington. It's it's my pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I wish I could be there in person, but uh, in my role as the uh, special coordinator for Tibetan issues, uh, I am I'm honored to have that role. I am humbled uh, to learn about the um, important work that you do at the Institute. And as you know, we in the United States are committed to helping you to preserve the distinct cultural, linguistic, and religious identity of all Tibetans. We really do uh, value what you're doing. Uh, we hope to continue supporting your efforts. And, uh, and as, as I said, the, the video was just really very uh, inspiring. Now, I'd like to say that today, your work is even more important now uh, than it ever has been. The, unfortunately, the People's Republic of China is seeking to empty traditional uh, Tibetan culture of its unique character and content and, uh, and to replace it with its own atheist perspective uh, from the Communist Party. And of course, as we all know, that which makes Tibetan uh, Buddhism unique is also what gives the art and the crafts that you are preserving their unique identity. I mean, so this is a, uh, what we want to do is you are like a, uh, an oasis, you're a garden. Uh, and not only the beautiful garden that you have, but you're also a place where uh, these attempts to destroy the culture uh, are being fought every day. And we thank you for that. So as the special coordinator uh, for Tibetan issues, and, and as I move into uh, future roles later next week, uh, I'm gonna be committed to sharing the Institute's work with others and and continue advocating for the preservation of Tibetan culture and of the Tibetan people's human rights, no matter no matter where they live. Uh, one of the great challenges facing the Tibetan people uh, is the fact that they're so spread out around the world and and the work you're doing is so incredibly important to preserving that identity, uh, because if, if we don't work hard on preserving it, then it will disappear. Uh, and uh, it will simply be uh, a piece of art in a museum, uh, not the living, breathing experience that, that we see in your video. Uh, I also want to make clear that the Tibetan people remain a key interest across the spectrum of politics here in the United States. Preserving Tibetan culture and advocating for the human rights of Tibetans and religious freedom on the Tibetan plateau is, is a focus across the political spectrum here in the United States. So you can rest assured 
that our support for Tibet and for your work will not waver. So as we look to the future, I am very interested to hear not only more about some of your recent work in cultural preservations, uh, but also to learn more about the dreams, the aspirations that you have for the development of the Institute and how we can best help you uh, align our policy to support your efforts, uh, not simply in, in Dharamsala, uh, but also uh, how to expand that across the world, uh, because you are, you are sitting in a place that is quite unique, and we are uh, more than uh, honored to be able to be of assistance. So with that, I'm going to uh, stop. And if you have questions, uh, perhaps uh, I'm going to introduce the other members of, of our staff who are joining us this morning. Let me do that briefly. Uh, let me start with uh, our, uh, uh, our Deputy Assistant Secretary, Scott Busby, uh, who, uh, who covers the region, uh, who covers the East Asia Pacific region. Uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary, Kara McDonald who uh, covers the um, South Central Asia region, uh, Ms. Stephanie Sandbeck, who is the um, artistic wizard who has put all of our programs together and without whom we would not be able to do this program this morning, and David Elber, who is in our uh, East Asia Pacific office in the uh, Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor. And I'm uh, not only honored to be with you, I'm thrilled to be a member of the team with them. And I thank them for all their support. So please, if you have questions for us, uh, I'm sure that, uh, that we, uh, we can have questions for you. And, and if you don't mind, I'll start with one, which is uh, how many visitors uh, do you get at the Institute uh, every year? And uh, I mean, 300 people, supporting 300 families is a very, very impressive, uh, a uh, piece of work by itself, but tell me how you know how how many visitors do you get a year? Oh, it's uh, the average. It comes around eighty to ninety thousand people every year visiting our institute. And I must say that uh, uh, since our institute is based on the sales of our products, and ninety percent of our product sales are through locally local stores, which we have in our institutes. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and how long, uh, let me let me just ask, I mean, I saw so many uh, absolutely wonderful things. Uh, how long is the, I mean, I'm sure it varies by, uh, uh, by, by artistic form, but, you know, when do you start children learning? Uh, to become, say, a woodworking master. I mean, the uh, I was very impressed looking at every single one of them. Uh, but uh, you know, I'd like to ask Mr. Galtson, yeah. you know, what is the uh, how long does it take to become a woodworker? ที่เรียนรู้ตัวมาแล้วยังมาลงตัวรถชุดเดียวกันนี่ยืนรถชุดรถชุดเดียวที่เจอเลยนี่จีเนียเจอเลยเจอเลยจีมันเป็นที่น
he became a student in 1998. Uh, he came to uh, India and he wants to become the wood carving master. So he joined the Nobulinga on that time. And he was uh, on uh, for the on on his time. He took like a six year course for the student. For the three years, they have to learn the like uh, only the design of uh, like a sketch, like a traditional art and decorative and all of that. After the three years, they have to start learning on a wood carving because they have to uh, learn how to carve on a wood. So they have to paint on a piece of paper. And they put it on a wood and they, on the base of that painting, they have to start carving on that one. So it's like a, almost like a six year for the, when he was a student, there's the six year, now it's a three years course for the student. Very good. This is a very, very interesting. I, I'd also like to, uh, to turn to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, how, you know, let me let me turn to the sculptors, Mr. Sesson, and uh, and and ask the question. You know, how long have you been in training? And uh, and in is there and, and there's a, actually kind of a, a two part question. So let me start with asking uh, how long you've been in training. So he has started uh, learning the metal sculpturing uh, when he was 12 years. The course is for 12 years, but here at the age of uh, 15 years, he has started this uh, practicing the metal sculpturing. So earlier, the course for metal sculpturing was for 12 years. Uh, however, now it has come down to seven years. So they have to learn for seven years, practicing the metal sculpturing. And then uh, from there on, they can carry ahead and uh, start with the uh, early uh, regular metal sculpturing works. So earlier, it was for 12 years, metal sculpturing course. However, now it has come down to seven years. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Funsuk, let me ask you, is there much opportunity uh, for the artisans at the Institute to interact with their, uh, you know, with, uh, with Tibetans in Tibet? Is there any interaction between the two? And if so, how, uh, how easy or difficult is it? No, not at all. We don't have interaction with that uh, the people, artists, especially in Tibet. Uh, but uh, I must say that all the masters, they have learned this art from the Tibet and they uh, pass on this art to our students. But we don't have uh, any contact or uh, with the artists in, living in Tibet. But here also, I would like to mention some points. Like uh, I said, uh, in our institute, learning this art it's not only a, like a practical things. So each art, like paint, tanga painting, tanga appliques, metal sculpture, since it, it's related to the Buddhist uh, religions, each art pieces had their own significance. The every posture of every day, the particular deities, the color, the colors which, which we're using in those paintings, each have their own significance, their own meanings, their own histories. So during this, the, the course for three years, they had to learn everything about this, uh, not only the practical thing, but also learn the background of the, that particular art so that they can understand deeply about that particular art. And since uh, these days, uh, comparing the past, we have a, like a in metal sculpture, the training period is for 12 years and other tanga painting, wood carving, and these things are training periods for six years. Now we have reduced this to the six and three years, because the problem we are facing uh, today, the younger generation, especially, I can say that uh, losing a little bit interest on learning these kind of arts, because it needs a lot of patience to learn these arts. So like Tanga painting in this three years, you couldn't learn everything about Tanga painting. You can only learn about the basic things about Tanga painting. And after three years of the course, 
we employ them in our shop, uh, the, the workshops as an artist and also pay them so that the people who are learning this art can choose this as their career also. And we try to pay them uh, well so that they can uh, keep their like uh, learning this art and also look after their families. Is there a uh, uh, is there any attempt or is there any um, uh, do you have any uh, other institutes within the Thai Tibetan diaspora community around the world? Is, mm -hmm. is there something like the Norbalinka Institute yes. um, in, say, Australia or England or, or anywhere else? Not in my knowledge, but India, we do have this uh, uh, training centers, especially in schools, and there's some private people also giving the uh, courses on these arts. But you couldn't find all these arts in one institution like we have in Nobelinka. Like I said, in some schools that they have taught, uh, like they taught about Tanka painting only, and some uh, uh, training uh, centers only taught about the skull, metal sculpture. But you couldn't find an institute like Nobelinka where you can learn all this art at one place. Well, I mean, that's certainly, uh, that is certainly unique. And uh, do you think that there would be any interest in, um, in at least doing, uh, would people in the Tibetan diaspora be interested in learning from these masters uh, if they had the opportunity to? Yes, yes, yes. But comparing to the past, the students, uh, the, the students who would like to show the interest in learning these arts was decreasing, definitely. It's an idiot's effect. You know, how have, um, how the, uh, how are the, um, you know, how do foreign uh, visitors react when they come? Uh, do they, uh, do they spend a fair amount of time with you? Uh, do they, uh, and more, I, I think importantly, do they, do they support the Institute by buying the goods yeah. that, that are made there? Yeah. Yeah, when, the, when you visit our institute at the gate reception, we have one tour guide sections. We have a tour guide sections where we have almost 10 tour guides. We are providing a free guided tour and explain everything about the art workshops that we are doing over here. And like I said, that creating in our institute, like creating one products say for example, like Tanga painting, creating a simple image of Buddha, it could take up to one month to produce one Tanga. So it's a really a, like a very like a detailed work that we are doing over here. Uh, but these days also you can find that Tanga painting and statues and the markets, which uh, like uh, just only people are producing just for the uh, like a business and these things. And they couldn't follow the exactly the written uh, according to the um, rules and regulations that we have mentioned in the Buddhist text. So we also like uh, uh, try to create authentic products in our institutes and uh, definitely people who visit our institute and when they see what we are doing and they support us by buying our products in, the, in our shops. Well, I certainly, I, I certainly think I can speak with, for my colleagues when I say that we're very impressed with with what we see, uh, and uh, and I'm I'm like I said I am uh, I am just inspired, you know. But if I were to uh, to decide that I'd like to buy a present for my wife, uh, you know, could I do that from uh, from here in the United States? Sure. Uh, especially we have one online store in our through our website you can purchase our products, and we. In the past, we couldn't uh, like uh, like uh, most of the sales are coming from locally, but we learned a lesson during this pandemic time. So we are now pushing more on the online sales. So you can find all the, our products in our online shops if you log into our website, and we will ship to your address. Uh, the you know let me turn to the the more intellectual side of what you're doing at the institute 
uh, you know, what we see with the the artisans that that uh, with whom we've been speaking this morning, uh, this is the physical representation of Tibetan culture. Uh, I understand that you're doing a uh, biography of His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Can you tell us tell us a little bit about that project? Uh, the project was started first. It was started uh, by His Holiness office, and they have uh, some research in His Holiness office. And after doing a few years, and His Holiness suggested that this project could take and by Nobel Institute since it's uh, related, to, related to the culture de departments. So we uh, initiated to take this project. And uh, till now we have published uh, 24 volumes and it is a very detailed work. And we reach now uh, 1995 up to 1995 of His Holiness, uh, these works. And it is a details uh, you can, this is the only like a biography of His Holiness where you can find all the details where when His Holiness meet, uh, when he uh, when he visit the different countries, did meet the different peoples, the, everything is mentioned in detailed works, uh, the, all the memos and meeting minutes, everything from the His Holiness office, they provide to us. And then we do a research on these things and then we put in other text. So this is a very detailed work and it would definitely become a, like a modern history of Tibet, we hope that. And what about, uh, what about access to his teachings? I mean, he's the, also the living personification of, of Tibetan Buddhism. Uh, and, you know, is there a, uh, is there a parallel effort uh, to really catalog his teachings for those of us who would like to learn more about them? Uh, no, uh, the, our biography is more like a little bit uh, uh, not related to his teaching. It's uh, more on the, his activities during his lifetime. Very good. Do you know if there is a uh, is is an effort uh, to preserve his teachings and, and yes, definitely. His Holiness well? Office they have also one department where they're preserving all his texts and teachings and everything. And they're not only His Holiness Office. There are many centers where they are preserving Tibetan his holiness teachings and his uh, like an audio visual also and text also. And, you know, in terms of your own efforts at the Institute, um, is there, uh, do you, is there, a, is there a demand? Uh, are there people interested in getting in? Uh, if, if say, uh, several of us wanted to, to, to learn, uh, learn the crafts and, and had the time, would it be possible to sign up as students? Yeah, um, like you see, the, the masters, the, right now the masters in the panel have there, and most of these are came from Tibet. They couldn't speak any other language than Tibetan. So we invited some of uh, our staffs to translate their uh, talk. So during the, if you wanted to learn the details about paintings, culture and these things. The Tibetan language is uh, like, uh, you should know the Tibetan language because all the texts and everything is, uh, are in Tibetan right now. So we're working on that. But apart from that, we also provide a short term courses, those who are interested and those who, can't, those who uh, couldn't speak Tibetan. We provide a short term courses like to experience our art for like, a, one week, one month, these kind of courses we are we have in our institute. Very good. Uh, let me uh, let me turn the floor over to you. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah, sure, definitely. I will. Some of our master have questions. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Tenzin Nobu La. Do you have any questions? Sure. Uh, Honorable Special Coordinator, Mr. Robert Restroster, the other dignitaries, uh, and my colleague on this panel, Tashi Gillette. 
uh, he want to ask the question the the hello the shongi the all this uh it is a cultural based question oh is that tang azu bi the shongi Thank you for your question. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, the uh, one of our roles uh, in the United States government is to try and stay in touch with the the Tibetan communities here in the United States and around the world. Uh, I have met with uh, Tibetan students here in the United States. Uh, I've met with other members of the Tibetan community. I had a very uh, uh, last uh, last winter, uh, we had a wonderful uh, Tibetan New Year uh, celebration at the State Department, which was very very nice, and uh, and I think that our role is to help bring these communities together to support you. Uh, that that to me that would be a success if we could bring the Tibetan communities around the world together to support what you're doing to preserve the language, culture, and religion. Mr. Funsak, I think you're on mute. Sorry. Samut, so do you have any question? うん、私ポポジョ、ドジビ、うん、カンツモダ。うん。ラシ。あれ、うん、ポジチロンタマ、ナツ、ペドンヤナ、ミコラ、テノ。ネタンディ、ガンダルシナ。でね、うん、タナ
and uh, and just learning, you know, reading uh, reading about Tibetan culture, uh, seeing some movies, uh, and and realizing what a uh, what a uh, what a rich tradition it is, and and then through the course of my career, uh, as you may know, one of my uh, I'm a human rights lawyer. Uh, I have specialized in in uh, in particularly in in issues relating to religion and culture. And so when I see a religion or a culture under attack, that is exactly the center of, of, of my own interest as a professional. Now, the meeting we had, the audience we had with His Holiness this morning, uh, as I said to him, it was really the honor of a lifetime. Uh, he is um, he is a treasure for the entire world. Uh, his his philosophy. Uh, he reminded us that uh, that God has given us not only a brain that we're supposed to use to understand the world and the problems around us, but also a heart with which we are to filter uh, all of the uh, uh, all of the emotions. Uh, that uh, that we also feel. So uh, it, it, if I will remember always uh, that that audience, and uh, and I will remember I have taken away many many lessons from from that short time this morning. I think that if those of us who uh, work in the field of diplomacy were to listen carefully and take to heart what he had to say. Uh, I don't know that things would be any easier, you know, but they would certainly uh, require a lot more thinking than they do now. Thank you so much, Thank John. Thank you. Anyone, Sujan La, do you have any question? Uh, uh, I mean, ก็ทุกชั่วโมงทําดีกว่าสิเลยชาวต่างชาติจิตตาดีกว่าแต่อ่าทําบุตรเลยอ่าแต่อเมริกาที่เซซอนเนี่ยพูดถึงแบบเจ
will be uh, will be supportive. Uh, they will be a very strong, I think, advocate for human rights across the board. And uh, I think that uh, uh, not only will you have their support, you will certainly have you will certainly have ours, and and you certainly have the support of of our our very dedicated and committed staff within the State Department. Thank you. And, and, and before we uh, before we move on, uh, what I'd like to, to also speaking of the importance of language and culture, uh, I would like to say a special word of thanks to all the translators uh, who have uh, who've done such good work in uh, in in translating uh, uh, your beautiful language into uh, into English. Thank you. Well, I guess we don't have much time left, so we need to wrap up. So anyone from the State Department would like to say something? Garrett, would you like to? Oh, Scott, I'm sorry, you go ahead first. I just wanted to say thank you very much for the presentation and the explanation of your institute. Very, very thank worthwhile. You. And as Special Coordinator Destro has said, um, those of us on this call, uh, 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 besides the special coordinator, we'll be continuing in our positions beyond January 20th. We are career professionals and we will seek to continue uh, the strong commitment of special coordinator Destro uh, to your work uh, uh, and to uh, Tibetan issues generally. So thank you and we look forward to continuing to be in touch. Thank you, thank you very much. Anyone? I'll just join uh, Scott in thanking you for uh, this time together and for your time uh, to share your work with us. It is truly inspirational to also echo that we are here and will remain as career professionals uh, to continue to support you and to um, you. work together in partnership. Um, I had one quick question. I hope it's, it's not too long of a question, but I was wondering if you could just tell us very briefly how COVID has affected, uh, the coronavirus has affected uh, both your work, but also your ability to outreach as a community to help preserve Tibetan culture. Yes. Uh, since our institute, I think it's, uh, it's uh, completely based on the sales from our products locally and uh, Till now, we are, you can say, it's a self-reliant institute. When the COVID hit the world, it definitely affected us a lot because uh, we are dependent on the local tourism. And tourism is industry is the first industry that has been affected by the COVID pandemic, by this pandemic. And we know that and the last effect will be remain to the tourism industries. So at the beginning of the pandemic period, we have to shut down completely institute for three months, almost three months. And after that, we started slowly, like uh, uh, we are working on a capacity of 50% until now. Right now also we are working on a 50% of capacity. So during that time, and we try to sell our products through online shops but this couldn't help us much uh, like earlier we used to have a sales in our uh, institute. So um, definitely we reach out for the help. Uh, and like uh, we, all, we know that the United States is the biggest supporter of our Tibetan people. So we also reach out to the United States government and during a very short span of time, the United States govern, government has uh, agreed to help us and they release a relief fund for us in a very short period of time uh, through USAID 8. And due to that uh, relief fund right now, we are working on a 50% capacity. So we hope that uh, sooner or later we will uh, recover from this pandemic effect. And we also hope that the United States government will continuously help us uh, to uh, promote our art and culture. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Thank you.
Well, thank you for your time this morning. It has okay. been a great pleasure to meet all of you. Uh, mm -hmm. I wish you all the success. Thank and you, uh, please do stay in touch with us. Thank you, sir. So lastly, I would like to thank you all uh, on behalf of Nobel Inca and Tibetan people. I would like to thank your honorable special coordinator and all the dignitaries from the state government for giving us a time to share our thoughts. And I would like to convey our gratitude for the United States government through you for the kind support they rendered to our Tibetan people in large and also our institute like a, a in particular. And uh, also we would like to thank you for the recently passing the bill, historic bill uh, of Tibet Policy and Support Act. And also I wish to like, I wish the United States new administration a very best wishes and successful year ahead. And I would like to take this opportunity to specially thank you uh, thank you, special coordinator. Like our Sikyong said yesterday, that you have been amazing special coordinator for us, who is very actively uh, playing a role to support us. And uh, although we have a virtual tour and meeting with you uh, today, but we hope that in the near future you will visit India and visit our institute physically so that we can. We would love to show you all our works that we are doing over here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, and have a good day. Thank you.